Well, all right, all right. Well, I was working on this tube design and and I thought it would be a great candidate to try that new uh, scarf seam settings uh, that's supposed to get rid of the seams or at least reduce the seams. Now, you probably know what the, the, the scarf seam is if you've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. It is uh, it's some settings that are added in. It's actually in Orca Slicer. It's a beta release right now uh, at the time of this video. And it's supposed to reduce or get rid of these seams. And you can see if you, uh, you can see the seam, how pronounced it is, especially if you get it in the right light. And I'll just rotate it around so you can see it there. Um, even on these black pieces. And that's on an inner seam also with this. Yep, there it is. Can you see that? If you get the, the light right on it. So it's really pronounced and you can get this on um, even on some flat surfaces and it's where the the layer transitions as it keeps going up and uh, and up to the next layer and I've tried other settings to try to uh, reduce it or to, trying to deal with it and one of the main ones I used to try uh, the seam position right here where it says you know aligned which is you know what what we just looked at there's random which uh, so it'll start the next layer at at just random spots instead of just being all on on one you know alignment and I haven't had too good luck with that um, when I'm looking at the random it kinda it just scatters them all over the place and while it doesn't have a uh, that pronounced seam it just looks like there's random artifacts just splashed around on the part and I think it it does more harm than good you know what I mean and the nearest I mean we can try to align it and I've done that a lot too say um, say if it's on an inner surface somewhere and you try to hide it where there's a, a seam um, or a corner uh, you can do it that way and but overall I always end up with a big seam like that and in another instance I was getting blobs coming out of uh, where the where the seams are supposed to be one here and one up here on this inner part of this ring now this was kind of special because this is this is a you can see it how soft this is it's a real soft filament almost like a TPU and where the seam was it was just leaving blobs right so so I treated it like a Bowden tube and because I was I was printing these off on uh, the Bamboo Lab P, uh, P1S all the P1 and the X1 series I mean they're uh, they're more of a direct drive uh, and I just treated it like a Bowden tube and looked at the settings for the filament here the settings where it's uh, on system overrides when you take a look at the retraction length well you enable it and instead of 0.8 I went up to 3 like that and uh, and that seemed to work you can see these are two identical pieces now if I rub my finger across it I can feel the seam but you can't see it you can't see that big blob that was that was leaving there so this was a really really soft filament and I had to do a filament retraction um, to get rid of those blobs but I'm sure if this was a taller wall you'd still see the seam right so I definitely wanted to try that scarf seam and see if that would do the job. So I was watching some YouTube videos and that's when I saw this one from uh, Teaching Tech. And he was pointing everybody over to this printables page, uh, the scarf seams guide. And it's a pretty good video. You might want to watch it too. Um, he went through much more details, different scenarios you know, using these test files. But uh, 
you can take a look at this and it gives a good description um gives a lot of info here all the updates while they were uh developing the scarf scene you know there's the overview um different requirements i mean it's it's a pretty good it's a pretty nice guide right um and i use this to set uh the settings on uh orca slicer mainly these here you can see um optimal speeds let's see a slower outer wall speed uh, 50 to 100 and he suggests 75 to 100 millimeters per second and I think I used uh, 75 the wider outer wall um, that was quite a change um, up to 0. 0.6 <laughs> it seems huge but uh, I tried at 0. 0.6 and I also tried 0. 0.5 and I was getting the same results um, the higher layer height, um, uh, it says might be helpful, but, uh, I just kept it at 0.2. Um, the inner outer inner, and that's the setting for, uh, uh, for the wall order, you know, where it's going to print and, yeah, and the, uh, and the extrusion rate smoothing, uh, they set it to 300 millimeters per second squared and yeah I just followed all this and and then further down yeah it just keeps on going the number of inner walls the print order uh, classic mode the speed um, uh, here we go conditional scarf joint um, using the contour plus the hole I use that so that because uh, on his tube design you know the contour on the outside but you also have that inner surface and uh, it would leave a, a seam on that also um, and using the inner scarf um, and it seems almost redundant uh, but I did try it and I scarfed around the entire wall since you know this was a, a tube um, so I just wanted to make sure that everything was was covered. Uh, the scarf length um, just left it the default of 20 millimeters. Uh, the scarf steps, uh, same thing, 20. Um, well, the default 10. I believe I set it on the default here. Yeah, just everything. Just follow this. At least it gives a good benchmark on uh, on the settings and then you can play with them and tweak them as you please so here this is my tube design that I was working on and I did not download uh, the test sample you know from printables because I was just going to test the tube right I just want to test that one seam so all these settings that we're looking at I'm not dealing with with any overhangs or anything like that right this is simply just for this uh, just for this wall on a tube. So we'll go over here and take a look. You can see the, the major changes that I did. Uh, the outer wall at 75. Uh, I didn't change anything else. Uh, strength there, you know, the walls, it, it all stayed the same there. And I usually use three. I'd probably go up to four. Um, but this is kind of a thin-walled um, tube anyway. So let's move on. Uh, the quality, so the outer wall width, you can see is 0.6. It was quite a change. It's going from, what, 0.41 or 0.42? Yep, 0.41 up to uh, 0.6. But I think I had tried 0.6, and I also tried 0.5 and didn't see any appreciable difference. But you might get different results, right? So everything's aligned. Um, the seam gap, that's uh, pretty much standard. Uh, the scarf joint, we want uh, the contour and hole. Uh, conditional scarf joint. Um, I left these angles. Scarf speed the same. The scarf joint speed, because I had already uh, slowed the uh, the outer wall down to 75, so that's going to be 
you know, basically 75, right? So I didn't change that at all. The height at zero, the start height. Um, scarf around the entire wall. Since it's a tube, I want to make sure it's all covered. Um, the scarf length, I just left that as a... Uh, uh, for 20 millimeters, scarf stess at, at 10, uh, scarf joint for inner walls, and it seems almost redundant, right, that you're going to do this uh, contour and the hole, because that's actually, you know, <laughs> just an inner wall, right? But uh, but you might use it, say, if you're if you have some uh, clearance holes or something, you know, through the part in you know you want to cover that too uh, but this one just to make sure it's going to cover that whole inner wall uh, roll base wipe speed that's on let's see what else I think that was it oh here we go the wall printing order you want to set it to inner outer inner and that is how I set mine up um, pretty much just going by what they showed in um, on the printables example. So let's slice it and see how it looks. And you can see where the seam would actually first show up if, you know, without all these changes. Now this is kind of strange. Now I hadn't seen this before, but you can see for some reason on this little part of the tube, this band right here, it's putting the seam on the other side. And same down here on just spots. Why it did that, I don't know. You know, I had never seen that before. But that's how I printed it. So, well, let's take a look. Yeah, so remember, this is out of this gray PLA, just standard PLA. And there's the seam. Same thing with, uh, I believe this was PLA carbon fiber. And this was just a matte black PLA. And but you can see the seams on all of them, and especially even on, on the inside there. If you can, lighting's probably not optimum for that, but you can see them there for sure. And here is the print. So let's take a close look at it. Now I'm just slowly rotating it so you can see the the entire tube. You can see it pretty did a pretty darn good job of uh, hiding the seam. If you look hard enough, like right there, can you can you see that? If you get it in the right light, you can you can you can see the joint, but I but I can't feel it. You know, when I'm rubbing my, my finger over it, I don't feel the seam, but, but you can see when you're really looking hard, it's there. Same thing on the inside. I can, I can see it in the right light, but, but I cannot feel it. Yeah, I thought it turned out fantastic. And when I printed it off, I also used uh, an STL file, or I used a step file instead of the STL. Um, I always get some better results, especially on a, uh, a round surface and with this tube and combine it with the, uh, with the scarf seam. And man, that's one of the best ones I've printed off, you know. I thought it was fantastic, so kudos to the guys who developed that, right? Uh, I'm looking forward for more. And given that this is a, a beta release, um, I'm sure there's going to be more developments, more testing. Uh, before it's actually released, which I'm really looking forward to. And I'm going to play around with it some more and uh, with overhangs or just whatever I'm printing and, and see if we can do away with seams under different uh, conditions, different models. I, I'm really looking forward to it. It's one of the, one of the best little add-ons um, uh, in the Orca slicer settings that I've seen in a long time. So... We will probably see it uh, in the full release, and also we'll probably end up seeing it in the, in the Bamboo Lab uh, studio also. Uh, I'm sure it's going to show up there pretty soon. 
Well, I guess that is it for this video. Uh, I thought it was a fantastic idea. Like I said, kudos to the guys who developed this and uh, I'm looking for further developments on it. Um, I, I like it already, so I'm glad I decided to, to test with the uh, beta release. And uh, well, that's it for this video. And as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video.